So to get the maximum performance out of our program, we tend to add threads to it. But is that it? Just adding threads obviously makes our program go faster. But is this the best that we are that we can get out of our code? Is this the most efficient implementation that we can come up with? So in this video, what I would like to talk about is how to write good multi-threaded programs. What does what do I mean when I say good multi-threaded multi program? It means a program that uses multiple threads and is correct, which means that no matter what, there would not be race condition or there would not be any inconsistency in data, which is which typically happens when you have a shared global variable across multiple threads and you're ensuring optimality, which means this is the best that you can do to get the performance out of your system. Right? You are not wasting any CPU cycles. Right? You are doing your best to get the most out of it. Right? Okay. So let's go into it and we'll take actual code through. I'll walk you through the code. I'll give you an example, a sense of how to write good multi-threaded program. Right? Okay. So in order to ensure the correctness of our code, especially when we're writing multi-threaded program is by using locking because it is very much possible that you have a globally shared variable across two threads, both trying to update the value and both losing the correctness of it. For example, if my count value is 10, both thread might read 10, both updates to 11 and write there and the final value should have been 12, but now it is 11, right? So that is wrong. So that is where you put locking, mutexes, semaphores, atomic instructions in order to ensure the correctness of your logic, right? So that is, we will not talk about that in depth. What we are more interested in talking about the fairness of our code in order to ensure optimality. Because we don't want, let's say if my program runs on 10 threads and if one of the thread is not doing a lot of work while other thread is overburdened, it means that there is no fair allocation across my threads. I don't want that to happen because if there is one thread sitting idle while other thread is grinding it out, my overall execution time is lengthened and we don't want that. Right? So to ensure optimality, we have to ensure fairness. We'll take an example of counting of prime numbers from 1 to 100 million. We'll just count the prime numbers. We don't want to print all of them. We'll count the prime numbers from 1 to 100, uh, 1 to 100 million, and we see how three approaches would shape the execution and how it would become better every time we go about it. Right? Okay. So we'll start with the first one. We'll start with a sequential approach to do it. When I ran the last time, it took three minutes, 49 seconds. But when I run it this time, it might go a little beyond that, given that there is a lot of additional software running at this moment on my machine. Right? Okay. So let me, while I explain, while I uh, walk you through the code, let me quickly just run the program once so that the execution keeps happening while I give you a walkthrough. So zero 05 counting prime sequential. Uh, 0, 5, not 4, counting Okay, so I put my program to run. Now I'll just give you a code walkthrough so that you understand where we are because this code remains fairly similar, the core logic of it. What changes is just the threading part of it. Right? And this code is written in Golang. I'll give you a quick, just a quick walkthrough of it. Uh, there is nothing fancy in it, but uh, this way you'll have an understanding of it. This Thus, you can observe similar behavior if you're using any multi-threaded language like Java, C++, holds true. I just use Golang for its simplicity and ease to create uh, threads and go routines in that. Right? Okay. So here I have a variable called maxint, which is set to 100 million. Uh, then I have total prime numbers, which is an integer, which would hold a total number of prime numbers from 1 to 100 million. I have a function called check prime, whose job is to check if a number is prime or not. And if it is prime, then it would do count plus plus total prime number plus plus that's it in order to check if the number is prime or not i'm iterating from three till the square root of that number let's say whatever number i want to check let's say i want to check if 1001 is prime or not so from three to square root of 1001 i check if it is divisible by that or not if it is divisible by any one of that number until the square root then the number is not prime otherwise it is prime a standard way to check if the number is prime or not right pretty basic still mildly optimal logic to check for the prime number right okay so we have this function which does this and key thing to note that check prime does not return anything it just increments the value of total prime number and at the end what we do we just print the value of that right okay now in the main function i just started my timer so that i count the in order to 
count the prime number sequentially what is the total amount of time that it would take for me to uh, find the total number of prime numbers right and what i'm doing is i'm starting from 3 because 2 is anywhere prime numbers so i'll do plus 1 3 to max end check if each number is prime or not right check prime if it is prime then good enough uh, it internally increments that counter so total prime number becomes plus plus and at the end i'm just printing checking till 100 million found these many prime numbers and the program took so much of time right here we see program is running it is taking significant amount of time will not wait for that program to end but from the previous run that i did here's a quick snippet of what we should expect out of it we see something output something like this and it is already almost past three minutes so it should be finishing anytime soon but we won't wait for that anyway checking till 100 million found 5761455 prime numbers and it took 3 minutes 55 seconds right so this is what we see we have already passed that so which means the program is taking even longer given a lot of additional processes are running especially this video recording software but we see how cpu is limited and everyone is contending for it given that it is sequential execution it just happening one after another right now it's our job to make it faster right so now while this program is running let me walk you through other approach where what we do is we add threads to the program in order to understand what we are doing let me give you a very basic walkthrough of what's happening so what we'll do is we'll add threads to it a very basic way to multi-thread or to parallelize the workload is instead of checking for one number every time let's say i am i'm creating 10 threads 10 threads that can execute in parallel now what i can do is i can split my range of 100 million into 10 ranges each holding 10 million numbers right and each thread taking care of that 10 million one so i have 10 threads each taking care of 10 million eventually i'll cover 100 million there right so that's the most basic thing that we can do over here right so let me give you a walkthrough of what that code looks like and when we run when the last time i ran the code it took just 42 seconds so from 3 minutes 55 seconds it took 42 seconds we might see some different time in this run and it's okay right the program is still running it is going well beyond four minutes now but that's okay okay so i'll give you a quick walkthrough it makes sense for us to stop this because it's taking way too longer to compute the total number of count, uh, prime numbers over here so i'm just interrupting it in between i'll run the sixth one which is the multi-threaded version of it but not fair it's unfair right while this is running let me give you a code walkthrough so the check prime function remains same but instead of doing total prime number plus plus we are doing an atomic increment of total prime number by one because now that there are multiple threads updating the same thing executing the same function in parallel what we would get is we would see a contention for this we want correctness that's why we did an atomic increment over here we did not just do plus plus because plus plus is not thread safe in order to make it thread safe we have to use an atomic increment or wrap it in logs so we did this right okay so this ensures the correctness of our logic and with respect to uh, the execution logic what changes is depending on the number of threads the concurrency here at the top we have defined concurrency to be 10 which means we want to create 10 thread we want to compute this in with a concurrency factor of 10 so what we are doing is we'll create 10 threads so for each one <coughs> apologies um, what we are doing is for each of the 10 uh, for the for the concurrency factor that we have we would do we would batch the range the batch of the range is simple the batch size is the maximum integer that we are iterating till divided by concurrency which means this is my batch size now for me what i have to do is each thread i want to give one batch so the first batch goes to this so n start is the number that we are starting with n start plus batch size and n start plus equal to batches so this way we are going one batch after another and creating n threads out of it where n is a concurrency factor so here what we are doing is through this logic we are creating 10 threads each taking care of one batch of my 100 million so each taking care of 10 million right okay and then we do and then we wait for it so wg dot add is basically adding a counter wg dot wait would wait for all of those go routines to terminate right and then it would move forward because i have to wait for all the threads to complete and then i would print a total time taken over here right okay now each batch when it is executing what it would do 
it would just for each number in that batch it would check if it is prime or not straightforward logic right and it would print once it is done once it is done checking for all the numbers in that batch it would print the time taken for this thread handling this range it completed in some time right when i ran this here we see the time taken is one minute and almost zero seconds so it's basically one minute so from three minutes and 55 or rather it was much more than that because it ran more than four minutes and if I go by my previous one, it was 3 minutes 55 seconds reduced to 42 seconds, right? So roughly that much of uh, dip we would see or rather that much of improvement in performance we would see over here. But here we see a classic case of how we think the program is made much faster and it is indeed faster. It is at least 4x or 5x faster, right? And we very clearly see it in this demo. But now, is this the best we can do? If we look closely in the output, we see something very interesting. The program ran really fast, which is good, but if we look, each thread is taking different amount of time to complete the execution of its batch. Because if you see thread 0 just took 18 seconds, thread 1 took 30 seconds, thread 2 took 37 seconds, thread 9 took 1 minute something. Right? So overall the time taken was 1 minute, but each thread completed its execution in not equal amount of time which means thread 0 had very less amount of work thread 1 had little more thread 2 had little more thread 8 had more and thread 9 had the most amount of work to be done because it took that much of time to do it right so although we made our code faster but it is not fair we want to but which means which means we can do better than this because the execution was not fair some threads executed some threads completed faster, some threads took longer time. So overall execution time was lengthened. So if I would have gone with some other logic, I might. So there is still scope of me squeezing out performance out of my multi-threaded program. Right? Okay. But why is this happening? Let's first understand that. This is happening because what we did over here. Just a minute. Let me change the screen. Okay. So this is happening because the number of prime numbers that we have are very dense at the lower range but very few at the higher end so there is a disproportionate uh, distribution of prime numbers so large prime numbers in smaller range longer prime numbers or rather lesser prime numbers in larger range that's one but more importantly the way we are computing the way we are checking the number is prime we are iterating from one till that number or the square root of that number and we're checking if it is divisible by like each one of them we are checking for the divisibility Right now, given as the number would increase, we would be checking far more for that to be a prime number or not. So there is a square root relation. The amount of checks we are doing is equal to the square root of. So that's why you see a curve which is which would taper at the end, and it was very evident in the time that it took. So 18 seconds, 37 seconds, and then it tapered off till one minute. Right. So this is a very standard square root curve that we also observed there. So this shows that each thread is doing disproportionate amount of work over there. So we have we so there is a scope of making it fair, which is where we come with the third approach. That hey, how do we add fairness? How do we ensure that my threads are doing like all of my threads are doing equal amount of work so that I ensure that I am completing my complete execution in the bare minimum time. So now instead of I batching my thing and giving one batch to each thread. What if, what if I just keep my threads running whenever they are done processing, they pick the next number and check if it is prime or not. Other thread comes, picks the next number, check if it is prime or not. And they continuously do this until I exhaust my range. That means that each of the thread would be busy until I exhaust my complete range of 100 million. That's exactly what the logic is. So now let me give you a very quick code walkthrough and explain what is happening behind the scenes. So what I have over here is just a minute. Okay. So what I have over here is my approach third, which is 07. If I run it, the 07th one, which is the fair way to write the code, it would look something like this. So here what I have is max int concurrency factor 10 total prime number but I've added one more thing called current number. So current number is the one is the current number that needs to be checked for prime. 
right or it was just check for the prime so that's the logic basically so what would happen is <coughs> check prime function would check if x is prime or not pretty standard logic it does atomic increment right but now what my threads are doing so what i'm doing first of all i'm creating n threads over here which would do do work it is invoking do work over here right and i'm just waiting for all of them to complete now what do work does if i go to do work what it does is it is literally an infinite loop which runs until i exhaust the range and what i'm doing is i'm just doing atomic count plus plus like it does basically current number plus one whatever the current number is does a plus one and checks if it is prime or not right every thread is repetitively doing this which means one thread comes it picks the current number increments it and checks that number to be prime or not second thread comes picks the number checks if it is prime or not third thread and once first thread is done it would go and check the next number if it is prime or not <coughs> because we are incrementing it atomically every thread would atomically pick a number check if it is prime or not if it is it would do count plus plus and what are this way all of my 10 threads are continuously running until i exhaust the entire range once the entire range is exhausted then each thread would automatically start to exit from this for loop and would print this right okay now when i run this code now when i run this code what happens is if you look carefully the program just took 51 seconds from one minute that we saw in the previous run for the previous approach it took 51 seconds it is much faster much faster than this, actually 10 percent faster than this right so we saw that we saw how this is the optimal that we can reach because if you look carefully the thread execution the thread did not complete it thread zero completed then thread one completed then thread two completed but it's a seemingly random order six four eight two one five zero right but each thread got completed and if you look at the time that it took to complete is roughly the same 51 seconds, 51.0, 50.01, 50.02, 50 something, right? You see how all of my threads were busy doing the work. It was not the fact that, hey, one thread is done, one thread is done sooner and that thread is just sitting idle or it's just done with its work, while other thread is doing much more grinding work, right? Every thread is continuously working, ensuring that I eventually count the total number of prime numbers from 1 to 100 million, not missing any, right? So here we see how we ensured correctness by doing atomic increments of my uh, total prime number plus plus and current number, how we ensured fairness by ensuring each thread does exactly nearly like almost equal amount of work. This way we minimize the time it would require for us to complete the execution of my program. And this is how we write good multi-threaded code. Good writing good multi-threaded code is not just about adding threads and getting things done. It's more about extracting the maximum performance that you can that you can out of your low-level code. And this is what I wanted to talk about in this video. I really hope you found it interesting. I hope you now you see the impact of doing that performance improvement impact of writing good multi-threaded code ensuring everyone does nearly the equal amount of work like in and in this use case it fits really well in some practical use case let's say if you're writing web servers and whatnot just ensure that you are not unnecessarily waiting for someone to finish see where you can parallelize see where you can stream and that would make your code much better i'll i'm I will be covering those details in a lot of coming videos where we go in the depth of concurrency. But this is a starting point. This is an excellent starting point for you to understand why writing good concurrent code is different than writing just concurrent code. Right. But yeah, I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it amusing. This is what I wanted to cover in this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Attend.